This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Rev. Tunde Balanta, as he brings you God's Word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. This morning, I'll be sharing with us about walking in the light and the glory of God. Walking in the light and the glory of God. Can you turn your Bibles to John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, and then John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 1, 1 to 5. If you are there, say amen. There's a screen up there. John 1, 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. John eight twelve. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So when we're talking about walking in the light and the glory, Jesus clearly told us here in John 8, 12, he said, I am uh, the light of the world. And um, in John 1, verse 4 says, In him, in Jesus, was life, and the life is the light. Now we see light around us, but the sun is a burning furnace that gives light. Friends, I'd like you to know that if we want to walk in the light of God, if we walk to walk with Jesus, if we want to walk in the glory, because light, brightness, also stands for the glory of God, because the Bible says in First Timothy 616 that God is immortality who dwelleth in unapproachable light. Amen. Men have never been able to approach God since the fall without a bleeding sacrifice. One of the keys to walking in the light and the glory of God is coming to Jesus through the blood of redemption. Walking in the light of the glory, you must come to Jesus in the light of the blood of redemption. Now, friends, you know, in the Holy of Holies, in the Holy of Holies where the high priest went in once a year, that place had no window. It had no light of the sun or the moon to light it up. The only thing that lighted the Holy of Holies was the presence of God itself. Amen. The holy place had that golden candlestick that they lit. But the holiest place where the Shekinah, where the cherubims were, where the mercy seat was, was that cover of the lid of the ark, the presence of God was what lit that place. If you read the book of Revelation, the Bible actually says to us that in heaven we not need any sun or moon in heaven. It said Jesus, God himself is the light of that place. Hallelujah. If you want to walk in the light of God, and I want to say to you, friends, it doesn't matter what darkness is around us today. It doesn't matter how dark it gets. When the blood of Jesus is applied anywhere, the light of God will come into that situation. If you want to walk in the light of God in this present darkness, it's dark everywhere you go. Is one story of darkness or the other? Is one killing or the other? Is one kidnap or the other? Is one abduction or the other? There's great darkness all around us. Is one kind of sickness or the other? Is something is happening that we don't understand? But I want to tell you the presence of God. If you want to approach the presence of God, you have to come through the way of the blood of Jesus. To walk in the light and the glory, you must walk in the blood of redemption. Turn to your neighbor and say, to walk in the light and the glory... You must walk in the, in the blood of redemption. Friends, I would like you to know that 
to go into that presence, the high priest had to put blood on that mercy seat. And when blood was applied, God blessed them. Their sacrifice was done. They were healed. They were delivered. The entire nation prospered. And I want to say to you, friends, that blood has not lost its power. The blood we're applying today is not the blood of an animal to give us peace for one year. We're applying the eternal blood of Christ that has redeemed us for all generations. I want to say to you, you are far from curses. I want to say to you this morning, the blood is speaking better things over your life. <clears throat> Hallelujah to Jesus. The blood of redemption to walk in the glory. The Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Isn't that what it says? The presence of God, the brightness of God was a man until sin came. But friends, this morning I want you to know, as you apply the blood of Jesus into any situation, the light of God is going to shine in that place. Leviticus 17, 11 says, the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar. To make sacrifice for your soul. I want to announce to a child of God. I don't know what 2023 holds. But I know something that 2023 cannot deny. I know something that 2023 cannot say will not work. I know something that does not have an expiry date. I know something that works in every season. It works in every decade. It works in every century. I know someone, I know someone that carries a life that has the brightness of God, that has the glory of God, that demons, principalities, and powers, they will bow everywhere they see the blood of Jesus, they see the light of God. And I want to say to a child of God, the blood is speaking your name this morning. The blood is speaking your name this morning. <clears throat> the blood is speaking your name this morning. Whatever hell is throwing at you, where I see the blood, I will pass over you. There's a Passover. In this season, there's a Passover. Over my family, there's a Passover. Over my destiny, there's a Passover. Over my children, there's a Passover. Over my business, there's a Passover. I declare to a child of God, the light of God will shine upon you in 2023. I declare to a child of God, your business will go to a new height in 2023. If you believe with me, shout a better hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. The blood opens the way for the light to come in. The blood of Jesus opens the way for the light to come in. Friends, the Bible says in Psalm 99 verse 1, The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He seated be between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. The Lord reigneth. Let the people tremble. He's seated between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. A brother was sharing, I believe it was last Sunday, his testimony here. He said they had, I wasn't inside when he shared, but I'm just trying to recap what I had. He said he had twins that, 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 that died at birth. Did I get that right? He said he had twins that died at birth. Can you imagine having two babies come out and they are dead at birth? And then they were having another baby. Am I right? And the devil wanted to perform what he did before. Am I right? How many of you had that testimony of that guy? He wanted to perform what he did before. There are some things that the devil has been doing your family before that has caused great darkness. And somebody said, uh, <laughs> is that not too simple? The things of God are not complicated. They are not complicated. He's ran in the family. He killed two twins, freshly born. And it looks like the devil was going to win again. I wasn't in the service when the guy testified. But he said he heard my voice. Did I get it right? Telling him to plead the blood of Jesus. God will use anybody you can understand to speak to you in your crisis. I was not in his house physically, but somehow in the spirit, God can make you hear something in the spirit. He heard me telling him, keep pleading the blood. The, bo the guy said he pleaded the blood for two hours. Over two hours, 15 minutes. He kept saying, Maraka ba 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 ba. When the doctor gives you Panadol for headache, he said two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two, you are a nurse. 
they, they give you malaria. They say how many? Two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two at night. Running stomach. Two in the morning. Two. <laughs> if you refuse to take in the afternoon, what will happen to you? It will not balance. Some of us, when it comes to God, we don't do God well. We say, okay, God, I will just, I will plead the blood for five minutes. If I don't see anything, yet if the native doctor said, put it under your pillow, I guess you will not close your eyes if you've not put it under your pillow. I'm here to announce to you the power and the efficacy of the blood of Jesus is in his purity. That is God himself. God has died my death. God has paid the price. Everywhere I put the blood of Jesus, there must be light in my house. There must be light in my business. There must be light when when I go out. There must be light when I come in. It will be like heaven on earth because the Bible says where the glory is, there cannot be darkness. In heaven there is no sun. In heaven there is no moon. God himself Jesus the Lamb is the light of that place. When you place the blood of Jesus in any situation, I want to tell you those demons will flee because they know the person behind the blood. They know the Holy Spirit behind the blood. I declare over you this week as you go out you will go in peace you will return in peace because the blood will work for you it will work for your children it will work for your generation your business cannot crack i say your business will not crash you will not be in an accident you will not end up under a trailer because there's a blood that brings light you will not be kidnapped you will not be abducted a thousand will fall by your side ten thousand at your right hand i'm here to declare the blood of jesus the blood of jesus is in the heavenly tabernacle and it's calling you your name this morning is there a witness in the house of the Lord somebody praise him. hallelujah sit down for a bit when there's darkness what is going to pierce that darkness and bring light is the power and the blood look at the sun it's a burning furnace but it gives you light I like the light of the sun I would like to go and visit the sun Go alone. When you are flying to the sun, eh, I will be here. I don't mind the rays on my body, but I don't want to face that sun. It's when you plead the blood of Jesus, you are not seeing the energy behind the light. Do you understand? The energy behind the light is more than the energy of the sun. The energy be behind the light is more than any power you can imagine. You know, God put us in different places for different reasons. If somebody with a different pigmentation, like a white person now, decides to go to Sokoto and say, I will stand under the sun for one hour in Giamaka Gaskia. Zekwene. Do you understand what you understand? What I'm saying? The guy we born. He doesn't even need to go to Sokoto. Make a con stand here for Romy. Say, I don't wear anything. I go just pose for sun. He go born. But well, you know why you can stand here? God put plenty of melanin for you. So you could just be shy. When they think they hit you, you could just be shy. When they hit you, you could just be shy. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Imagine now somebody says, Me, I will not just stand there. I want to visit the sun. Yeah, you want to visit the sun, man? God is giving you light. The thing way deep behind that light. You see, you don't see what is behind the light. You don't see the power in the blood behind the light. The Bible says, John G. Lake said, he said the Holy Spirit is creative of good as is destructive of evil. There's another side of the Holy Spirit we do not know. When it comes to you, the way a, 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 a mother will fight for her child. Some mothers, if they say that house is on fire and the child is inside, the woman will become superwoman. She will just jump. She will, your wife will become another thing. She will fly through the door. She will get inside and pick that child. When God is fighting for you, you are like a you are like a cub lion inside a terrible place. And the mother lion says, "For the sake of Zion, I will not hold my peace." I tell you, come by the way of the blood. Don't come by your good works. They are useless to God. Don't come by, I've never done this before. God does not need that. The only thing the devil respects is that bloodline. Once you say the blood of all, say, uh, case case closed. I say your case is closed. The condemnation is closed. Your case is closed. The power behind the light, we don't see it. It's like the power behind that sun. I mean, I've forgotten how many firing heights they said it is. 
on the surface and inside. The thing is a ball of fire. But it's giving you light. But the devil can feel that fire. That's why the Bible says, our God is a consuming fire. Every witch that has tried you has felt the consuming fire. Everybody who has tried to destroy you in the spirit, they felt the consuming fire. They will say, Yari enafa uta uta. They are not speaking naturally. They are talking about what they saw on the other side. The Lord will help us. When you come by the way of the blood. Hallelujah. All right, let's add something to this and move quickly. So, if you walk, want to walk in the light and the glory, you walk in the light of the blood of redemption. If you want to walk in the light and the glory. Thank you, Lord. You experience the light of God through his covenant word. You experience the light of God's presence or the light of God through his covenant word. Hebrews 6, 13 and 14. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. Luke 13, 16, Hebrews 7, 2. And ought not this woman, Luke 13, 16, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound low these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. Hebrews 7, 22. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Thank you, Lord. Through his covenant word, you experience the light of God. Now, why am I saying that to us specifically this way? You see, <clears throat> the Bible says, where we read first, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. He said the word was God. Hallelujah. The word was God. The word there representing Jesus Christ. He is the word of God from the beginning. Amen. Let us make man in our own image. Jesus is the word of God. He is the word made flesh. So when you are standing on the word of God, you are standing on Jesus. That's why Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. For my word to pass away, that means I'm passing away because I and the word are one. That is good enough for me. It's good enough for me. If God and his word are one and God says something to me, he promises me something. Is that not good enough? Somebody whose word and him, there's no difference. If he says, if some people say, if they phone you say, I'm giving you 50,000, when, when, when you see them, it will become 10,000. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm telling you, I say, I say, Kai, my brother, things, ground no level, ground no level. 50 becomes 10, that's human being. But if God promised you 50, it may even become 1 million when you see him. Because nothing shakes him, he owns the whole world. But God goes beyond that. Is somebody hearing me? God goes beyond that. If, if somebody wants to give you loan now, um, uh, what's your name again? James. Someone wants to give James a loan. Say, James, I want to give you a loan. James, please sit down. I like your shirt. Nice shirt. Amen. Some of you cannot like anything. Say, not only in God they bless. Not only in God they bless. Make it bless you too for once. <laughs> so, he said, James, I don't want to give you loan. Uh, James, to give you this loan, uh, James, you have to go and bring the sea of war to your house. You first I say, ah, come on. <laughs> Ordinary 100,000, you won't give me. Now you have to bring loan up. He said, and James, uh, you have to bring your father and mother before I can give you this loan. <laughs> uh, you have to bring the document of your car. 
Are you seeing that something is changing there? It's no longer a promise. The guy is trying to make a contract with you. He's trying to make a covenant of some kind with you. So that in case you fail, they can sell your land or hold your father and mother for failure. In Hebrews 6, 13 and 14, where I just read to you, the Bible says, when God made the promise to give, his promise is good enough because that's Jesus talking. You know, they shake for anybody. His promise is good enough. God said, for you to have real confidence, I swear by myself, because there's no greater person I can bring. So to give you this money, you have to bring the central bank governor. That is too serious. But God said, I'm swearing by... So technically speaking, God is saying, I'm ready to die if I fail you. And he did to make sure he kept his word to you. I don't know if you understand. Isaiah 49, 15 says, Can a sucking mother or a nursing mother forget her baby? He said, Even if they forget, I can never forget you. Behold, I have tattooed your name. That is covenant. A covenant, a blood covenant, especially you are saying, I'm ready to give my life, if necessary, to keep my word. Hallelujah. So we're in a very secure place this morning. The light of God will shine in your darkness this morning. Because God is prepared to give his life where you are concerned. And he has given his life where you are concerned. Everything the Bible says, all the promises of God are yea and amen. The promises were looking to the cross, but in the cross they found their fulfillment. Everything you are looking for has been paid for. I said everything you are looking for has been paid for. Your account has been credited this morning. Because Peter writing says, by whose stripes we were healed. Don't, 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 don't be too impressed with what the artists are painting about Jesus. When they tied Jesus to the whipping post, Psalm 22 is believed to be a psalm that Jesus read on the cross when he was going through his ordeal. And if you read it very well, in a place Jesus said, he said he can see his bones staring at him. He said the bulls of Bashan have come again. The dogs have attacked him. The whip they used for Jesus, they had some spikes that can tear your skin at the edges. And people that have had visions of the whipping post corroborate Psalm 22. That fine man you are seeing, he is not Jesus. His Bible, Isaiah said his visage was so marred, he did not look like a human being. One child of God who shared our own encounter, he said that when they whipped him, his flesh were flying out. After they tore the back, in fact, somebody said his veins were showing. His rib was exposed. His bones were exposed. If you read Psalm 22, you get this very horrible feeling if you can read it well. After whipping the back, they turned him over. That whipping can kill a normal person. They mocked him and they put a crown of thorn on his head. One sister sharing her vision said, the, the flesh that came out was in part of his body was like the palm of your hand, the size of the palm of your hand that fell out from that whipping post. And that's for every sickness that can ever afflict you in your life. So I refuse to be sick one day in my life. I refuse to allow sickness in my body. Hey! I say I refuse to allow it in my life. You can take it if you want. But I am not taking that thing from hell. If his body was so destroyed, his visage was so mad, if he paid with his blood and he paid with his life, it is a disgrace for me to tolerate the devil in my household for a minute. And I refuse to tolerate it. You need to stand up on the inside of you and say no to the devil. No to the devil. No, you are not coming in here. In the name of Jesus, I'm talking about covenant promises. Paid for with the blood of Jesus. Can somebody lift their hand in gratefulness? What is killing them today will not kill you. COVID will not kill you. Whatever they discover tomorrow will not kill you. 
We refuse to go down because his body was destroyed. They will tell you at your age you should be having this. I refuse to have it. This should be happening to you. I refuse to have that. That should be happening. I refuse to have that. Because his body was destroyed. He didn't even look like a human being. He said men turned as it were their faces. People could not even look at him. So that God Lift your hand and thank him. They don't tell us enough of what happened that day. He didn't look like Isaiah said his visage was mad. He did not resemble a human being. I've looked at Psalm 22. I've read it in many translations. And I've read Isaiah. And I'm saying, wow. I know the, 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 the toughest part of that for me. He said, it's please, Isaiah said, and it pleased God to bruise him. <laughs> what we saw physically, what happened spiritually is a billion times worse. That's what he paid. And so as you are standing this morning, by the faith of God, I rebuke every disease in your body. I rebuke every infirmity in your body. The one you know, the one you don't know, the one trying to start somewhere in your body, I command it to die in the name of Jesus. I command every disease to disappear under the sound of my voice. No infirmity in your house. No infirmity upon your children. The crown of thorns was for you. He bore it for you. I rebuke everything of hell in your body. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hand and thank him. Anything of hell, I forbid you in this environment. In every family represent, I forbid you in the name of Jesus. Let's just give him thanks. Just wave your hand. Lord, I'm healed of back problem. I'm healed of knee problem. I'm healed of shoulder problem. I'm healed of hip problem. I'm healed of ulcer problem. Whatever it is, you are healed this morning. You are healed of diabetes. You are healed of high blood pressure. Just keep confessing like that. I am healed of this. I am delivered. Just thank him because that body was destroyed. That body was destroyed. That body was destroyed. It didn't It's not going to run in your generation. You have a right to refuse it this morning you have a right to refuse it this morning and thank him somebody's ear i don't know what's wrong with your ear but your ear maybe something's coming out i can feel it something is coming out of your ear right now something is coming out of your ear right now as i speak something is loosening in your ear in the name of jesus the power of god is coming on somebody's knee here on your side move around a bit do something in faith that heaviness in the center of your head or that burning sensation is leaving you right now that heaviness in your back is leaving you right now somebody's ear something left you something came out of the ear in the name of jesus can you wave your hand and give jesus praise something in your chest is leaving you it cannot stand in the glory of god it cannot stand in the light of god it cannot stand in the glory of god it cannot stand in the light of god can you wave that hand and give him praise and give him glory in the house of god father i thank you that perennial headache it comes and goes is gone forever lift your hand and wave it to him your neck something at the back of your neck around here you are healed right now. Just move it. Just do, do something with it. Move that neck. Move that knee. Do something in faith. Wherever you are, come on. Do it quickly, quickly. Quickly while we have the anointing. Give him praise and glory. Give him praise and glory in the house of God. Wow. Wow. You came. It was good you came to church today. Something is different in your body. You feel something left you. Can you wave your hand and give him glory in the house? Just wave it. People, a lot of people have been touched this morning. Just wave that hand. Give him the glory. You are the one that something either came out of your ear or your ear wasn't hearing well and you are hearing now something loose from your ear. Can you wave your hand wherever you are to me properly? Something about your ear. Wave that hand. Wave that hand to me. Something with your ear. Can you wave it well? Let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There you are. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, I give you praise this morning. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning.
Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m. and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.